first official day of fall, September 23rd. I'm just opening the vlog. And it is raining outside. We have a storm system passing through Virginia this weekend. I just wanted to update you a couple things from yesterday. So yesterday I did work on my story, but because I had reached the end of a draft, all I did yesterday was, okay, I need to start getting myself organized for the next step in the revision because I still have to submit my materials for the agent one-on-one -on -one that I have to do. So I started just by going through like my to-do list and going through my list of all the questions I have to answer in the story. I'm just trying to set myself up so that way I can like just start making changes as opposed to being like I have to figure out what changes to make, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing, sort of gathering all my information that's spread across different places. So I started working on my query letter. I'm pulling from my summary that I wrote a long time ago, but it's because I wrote the summary before I finished the book, even before I wrote the book, some things have changed, but I always really liked the way the summary was written. So I just started today taking it and updating some of the details. But in the middle of doing that, I realized that like, so there's this overarching mystery throughout the story. There's a, there's, there's some different mysteries going on but the one that my main character follows is basically most of her plot during the book is like following different parts of this mystery and trying to figure it out but I realized that her motivation to solve that is merely out of her own curiosity as opposed to it being something that's related to her motivation for the story like she has a goal she has a dream and she faces setbacks from that dream during the story but then this whole mystery plot is sort of a side tangent from her actual goal and pursuing that and her struggles with that. So I was realizing like, okay, she needs to have more motivation to solve this mystery than just being curious about it. So I was trying to tie the mystery solving to her actual plot and I kind of figured out a way to do it, um, or at least I'm starting to, so that's good. It really is lovely when things just kind of work out in the story. Like, in order to solve this issue, I basically just looked at what I already had in the story and figured out ways to just tie the things that already existed together, as opposed to having to come up with, like, a new plot element that would just complicate things more. So I'm using what I already have, which is very good. wanted to update on where I'm at with um, my main character's sort of through line. So there are seven parts in the story, eight if you include the epilogue, and each part is just like four to eight chapters. So the first part is like the introduction, right? It's where we learn the main character's goal and then we challenge it by throwing a wrench in her plan. Suddenly she has this other path that she could or should be on and now she's like reckoning with that and trying to figure out if her dreams are even worth pursuing, if she can have everything that she wants and needs, or if she has to choose between one life or another. That's part one. That's kind of like her scenes are all going to be focused on that. Part two is when we sort of further drive the nail in 
the coffin of her dreams by expanding on this other life that's been put in front of her. Then we end on sort of an upturn where her friend encourages her to continue pursuing her dreams no matter what. Then part three, there's like an intersection between the path of her dreams and the path that she's supposed to be on a way that they come together in an interesting way so exploring that but also sort of introduction to some of the mysteries that she is supposed to be exploring and then now I'm figuring out parts four through seven so that's giving me some guidance it still requires a lot of brain power to figure out like what each section of the story is going to be about but it is giving me some hope <laughs> and so now I've just got the index cards for my main characters scenes I'm just going to go through one, each of them one by one and see if it makes sense for that scene to be in part one or part five or whatever and then just kind of see if that gets me any further along. Welcome back, it's like 9 p.m. We had dinner, it was lovely. I had midnight spaghetti, which is spaghetti with a lot of garlic and olive oil, eggplant parmesan and broccoli, steamed broccoli. And it was lovely. And then me and my mom listened to some of the recent halftime shows with like Beyonce and Bruno Mars and like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. And so now I'm here. I set a timer for an hour. I'm just going to work for an hour and do what I can. And then I'm going to go over there and watch some TV. I've got my tea here. And that's probably still too hot. So I have, as you can see, I've, I've just staggered them so I can keep them separated while still being in the same binder book. So this is my main character's plot divided into seven parts. So you have to understand, when I wrote this draft, I was writing it, I was discovery writing it, so I'm making it up as I go. So now that I have everything written, I can sort of take a bird's eye view and start moving things around that might make a bit more sense. I made a new Word document and I copied and pasted my entire draft in there. Um, so I can just start playing with it, but not mess up the original. This is my manuscript. It's like, look at the, oops, it stopped loading. <laughs> there, yeah. And that's the end there. 394 pages. <laughs> character. She's one of the main POVs that we hear from throughout the book. In the original draft, I introduce him in chapter one. If I'm trying to make the beginning a bit more succinct, can I just wait until a few chapters in to introduce this character? Because he doesn't need to be there. But one of the things I like about having there, having him there is that He's, he sort of plays Bella in Twilight. She's the one who we as the readers see this world through so that she, we can learn about it as she learns about it. Like she's the one who's gonna like ask the questions so that way the reader can gain answers. So he's sort of in a way plays that with getting to know the setting. And then the other pro of keeping him in the beginning is that he breaks up the narrative a bit. So it's not just, cause I want this book where every scene is like told from a different character's POV. I guess the sort of happy medium is that instead of introducing him in chapter one, and instead of waiting until like chapter six to introduce him, I could introduce him in like chapter three. Wow, it's dark. <laughs> Haven't opened the windows yet, that's what I'm doing now. Good morning. It's still gray outside, even though I think the rain has stopped. It was raining non-stop all day yesterday it was glorious um so yesterday i basically rearranged part one some chapters didn't change but most of the chapters kind of saw some changes greetings you're laying on the table and i am tying up my 10 foot long laptop cord that i bought recently because i was tired of not having a laptop cord that was long enough but anyway i just wanted to update you on what I was working on this morning. Instead of going character by character with the overall plot of that character, I just did what's the part breakdown for the entire story. So thematically thinking like, okay, part one is like introducing and establishing things. Part two is like learning more about things and developing those things. Part three is a pivot point. The way things were and the way things 
will be intersect. So you're at a point where you could go either way, like a crossroads sort of section. Um, the things that we did know are called into question, things that we're certain are now up in the air. And then part four is, so I said, a sort of devolution into chaos and bad fortune for some of the characters. Um, so basically, a lot of them are facing the consequences of their choices and their hopes are dashed. And then part five is truths coming to the surface, but not everyone is ready to make amends. So characters are learning things about each other, old wounds are brought up, um, and there's just a lot of like resistance and conflict, I guess, between characters and like with the plot and with the setting. And then part six and seven, I, com I decided to combine part six and seven into one. So part six now, is kind of like the bends. So like, you know when divers come up too fast and they get like decompression sickness? It's kind of like that. It's like a bunch of things just rose to the surface, like truths, clues, everything just came up to the surface, but now there are consequences for those things being revealed. And then part seven is just the epilogue. <laughs> Bless you. The little puppy Satsu has a cold. I guess I could just do this now. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Oh my gosh. Look at the poo poo. Look at that too. She's so cute. She has a cold, so she's just like sniffing and sneezing all over the place. She'll walk up to you just to sneeze on you. <laughs> and somehow it's still so very cute. I've also got a zucchini apple carrot bread in the fridge. Or not in the fridge, in the oven. And if you've never heard of that, it's like zucchini bread. It's like carrot cake and it's like an apple cake, but they're all combined. It's kind of a healthier version. And I forgot to mention that I also um, redid my summary. I figured out ways to make it sound more like a summary, like alluding to things, being kind of cryptic with things, but also giving specific details and showing the character's motivation and you know the challenges that are faced there. So all of that in my summary. I'm gonna let it rest for a bit. And then I think maybe tomorrow I'll try writing the query letter like all together. So like putting the specific query letter details in there, but I also have to do the summary, oh, God. the synopsis. Hello, it's 10 p.m. Sunday night, and I thought I'd just recap what I've done today. From earlier, I had basically organized my index cards for the whole book, divided by what, what was happening in each part. So just now, I took the index cards for part three and started updating my scene list, which is in Notion, um, so that it matched. And as I was doing that, I was like trying to visualize the story to make sure things could make sense. But I found myself struggling to figure out how the scenes flowed from one to the next. Like the scene, the collection of scenes that I had put for part three kind of felt disjointed now. And so I was spending a lot of brain power trying to figure out ways to connect things, changing things around a bit. And then when I got to the end of the chapters for part three, I wasn't really sure how... I wasn't really sure if I wanted certain scenes to be in part three or if they should go to part four. So I was playing with that and I kind of didn't know what to do about it. So I decided that with all my confusion, <laughs> I should put it down for the night and sleep on it and maybe in the morning I can come at it from a fresh perspective because I think my brain's a bit spent. Good afternoon, it's the next day, it's one o'clock, it's Monday and I am I'm working on my index card and the new outline this morning but I'm starting to wonder if I've been going about this all wrong because I've been, I'm still stuck on part three. I started out feeling kind of good like I was finding a bit of a flow but now that I've had like an, I've had a couple hours break from when I was looking at it this morning and now I'm thinking like maybe I'm changing too much. Like I know I'm trying to find basically a better order for all the different scenes. It just feels like I'm trying too hard to make fetch happen. And so I'm wondering if I need to take a step back, go to the original outline that I had, and instead look and see, okay, there are some scenes that definitely need to be moved around, but maybe not as much needs to change as I've been trying to make change. I just think I'm overwhelming myself and I'm making this more difficult than it needs to be. Hello, it's nighttime. And I just wanted to tell you a couple of things that I've realized today. One, I am getting so muddled with the plot. The other thing, well actually three things. So the other thing is that I 
it probably it probably would actually be best for me to put the story down before I try to make any of these. This is pecan, by the way. You put him in a microwave and he gets hot. Put the story down, take a break from it for a while before I make any significant changes that I might later regret. Um, and just give myself some time to think about it in the back of my mind and then maybe that'll make it, when I come back to it eventually, I can be a bit more clear-minded on that. Um, so once I finish getting my materials together, I'll do I guess more or less the bare minimum. Like I said, I like the new beginning that I started to plot, so because I only have to submit the first 5,000 words, I might just stick with revising the beginning. Although I do have to do a synopsis, so I'll probably just go with the original synopsis plot. In the synopsis, you don't have to list every single event that happens, you just kind of keep to the, the main points. Um, so I'll just do that with my synopsis. And then yeah, submit it, and then once I submit it, just put the story down. Maybe make some notes for myself so I at least know what I was thinking the next time I pick it up. Because every time I pick up a draft, I never leave notes for myself, so I never know where I left off, so I basically have to start from scratch. So maybe this time I can do my future self a favor and leave some notes of where I left off and what I was thinking when I did, when I put the story down. Um, yeah, and three, this is kind of a silly thing to realize, but it is only a first draft, technically. I don't know that the stakes of my story, the things that are at risk, are as prominent as they should be in the story. That and I'm not entirely sure who or what the antagonist is. Like this is kind of silly. Like you think about basic story structure that you learn, or at least I learned in seventh grade English class, like different types of conflict, like man versus man or man versus environment. Or man versus technology you know all those kinds of things those basic conflict um, breakdowns and you also think about a protagonist versus an antagonist like the protagonist is the character who has the goal right and the antag the antagonist is the person who or the thing that is kind of in the way of your character getting that goal or maybe is like actively pursuing the opposite of your character's goal um, and in my story, I can't say that I know for sure who or what the antagonist is. Like, I know kind of what is at stake for my main character, but I don't know. I think I could do more to bring it out. Okay, is this a silly question? Um, whatever the conflict of the antagonist is, is it constantly on my character's back? Like, is my, con my character constantly looking over their shoulder throughout the entire plot? I guess is this antagonistic force a constant threat throughout the plot, or is it just something that they are aware of but isn't actually like in actively interfering with them as they're proceeding i hope that makes sense um i just i guess i need to do some more research on conflicts in story and antagonists in story and stakes okay that's all i have to say good night Come. Move. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to tell you, I spent all day today working on my synopsis. <laughs> all day. Okay, I started out taking my working scene list, copied it and pasted it into a Word doc, removed all the bullet points so that it was just sentences. And then I combined things and made them into paragraphs. And the first draft of that ended up being five pages. <laughs> There's no specific guidelines on what the synopsis should be, but the website that's hosting the writing conference says, you know, two pages, one to two pages, 500 to 800 words or 500 to 1,000 words. So I was at like over 2,000 words in five pages. So then I have to pare that down. So I spent like maybe half an hour, an hour paring it down, I think. No, actually, it was probably way more than that because time was sort of moving like at warp speed this evening. Anyway, I pared it down, got it to like three pages, and then I realized, oh, why did I change the font back to Times New Roman? Because I never write my novels in Times New, Roman. I, Times New Roman. I pick a specific font for each book. So I <laughs> changed it back to Times New Roman and suddenly it dropped to two pages. And I was like, oh, great. 
but the word count was still like 1500 words so I wanted to try to get it down as close to a thousand as possible so at the moment it's like 1160 but then I realized I have all day tomorrow to continue working on the synopsis because tomorrow is the 27th and it's due on the 28th so yeah I'm just very happy that I did that the other thing I did today was I read through the first 5,000 words which equates to the first two chapters of my new rearranged beginning so it's actually kind of my first two chapters are actually like 5,000 and I don't know a few words out over that but I'm hoping that they won't mind <laughs> but tomorrow I'll read through it again and I'll see if there's anything that I might remove hello so I thought I would let you know that I finished my query letter my synopsis and the first 5,000 words of the story and I submitted it to the agent one to one thing I finished a few hours ago and now working on a puzzle that's supposed to look like this it's Amsterdam so my synopsis I got it down today with several several revisions to like 800 something words um, that required taking out entire concepts, it required grouping things in a way that's not exactly chronological, but it, re it puts related things together. But anyway, it's done, it's submitted, and thank God for it. So, the way I feel right now is it would be smart to take a break, but I kind of don't want to just leave this mess for myself to pick up next time. So I might just write some notes for myself or and organize the notes that I do have, and then just leave it alone and then take some time to finish this puzzle and then maybe get into poetry. Okay, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this rainy weekend in the house, plotting and revising my story. It's been a really cozy time. I've got a hot water bottle here, which I'm just using purely because it's cozy. Um, but yeah, it's been a great time. I feel like I've made some good progress, but I still have quite a ways to go. As I mentioned that I wanted to take a break from writing for the first couple weeks of October. That doesn't necessarily mean that I won't write, but I don't want to be committed to a story. Just really feel the creative flow. Watch all the movies, watch all the TV shows, read all the books. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.